I started this piece with um, an MDF board. It came out of a picture frame where the glass had broken. So I base coated it in white gesso. And now you can see me mixing um, my limited number of colors directly on the palette. I haven't put any um, paint off to the side. So I'm being a little bit careful that I don't create mud. So I'm trying not to mix my yellows, my blues, my pinks, my purples all in together because that neutralizes each other. So I'm trying to keep the blues and yellows together, uh, the pinks and blues together to make purpley color. You'll see me adding some white now. Um, and so far I haven't washed the brush. I, I was going to say you'll see me do it shortly, but up until now I haven't really given the brush a good clean. I'm just being a little bit sensitive as to where I put my brush and what colors I'm picking up. So you can see it's a little bit neutral just there and um, that's because I have mixed those colors together. Sometimes I'm using shorter strokes, sometimes I'm using longer ones. Um, depends on how I feel. At this point I'm just relaxing, enjoying the colors that I've put down. I'm just playing without there being any pressure. And it's always interesting to see what colors you make. Because um, basically I have a red, blue and yellow with the addition of white for tinting. So my red is in fact a magenta pink. My blue um, is a teal. Um, and I, uh, there's a little bit of cobalt blue in there as well. And then the yellow, I think, is just a primary yellow. So I just keep playing um, at this stage. I haven't dried it off at all yet. That will be coming soon, I would think. It's funny, I painted this quite a while ago. It's a neutral colour happening up in the top there. Yeah, I'm not surprised that I'm washing my brush. Um, what I'm drying it off on is a piece of old tea towel. So it was a lovely rooster tea, um, tea towel I had for um, drying my hands in the kitchen and it just got too old. So I'm using it in my art room, giving it another lease on life. So obviously I thought at the time that I needed to lighten a few areas up. Rarely will I add anything darker than a Payne's Grey. I don't tend to uh, tone things down. I don't tend to um, make shades. I use the darker colours in the last few steps. Um, so here you just see me adding the white so that's tinting what's underneath i'm using a lighter brush stroke here i'm not pushing too much of the paint around i'm really sort of almost glazing on the top a little bit more pink going on this is by joe sonia this particular one it's a really good um, base to start off with. Like it's not too expensive, nor is it the cheapest. Um, tends to be a little bit transparent, this color, but not too bad. And I, I use it a lot. I enjoy working with it. I like working with it and um, a golden uh, hot pink it's also um, lots of fun. It's interesting watching your yourself um, work backwards. I've never tried a voiceover before, so I'm learning.
now I am thinking that I'm going to be scratching back into this I can't imagine why I'm covering the whole lot in white and look at that yes so this is a semic writing a semic writing is when you um, you think about writing but you just relax and you do whatever seems to come from your hand and they're not specific words um, it's just you mimicking writing a little bit like children do when they first start writing they put squiggles and things all over a page and tell you this says I love you so I'm making a few more marks in here so you can see the little um, lines I did a few circles so that's actually scratching through those top wet layers of paint down to the initial layers um, that were underneath so this is all optional it just adds a little bit of texture and it brings what's underneath back to the surface so when you do these imaginary landscapes they're all about um, layering putting coats of paint one on top of the other in different forms so some parts of this picture will be completely covered over and others will always remain to be seen. So usually I will go in and dry at this point, but in this instance it doesn't look like I have because I haven't edited any um, drying out. So this is a little bit like a leaf motif. I enjoy doing that. So one of the good ways of working out what kind of uh, marks you enjoy making um, is to look at your old school books and see what you used to doodle on the pages when you got bored in a subject or once upon a time when you had a phone attached to a wall and you would have a notepad beside it you would find all sorts of doodles and marks and scribbles and things that everyone in the household used to make while they were chatting on the phone you couldn't actually walk away or do anything else um, maybe we all need to spend a little bit of time doing that kind of thing so these are just some of the marks that uh, come naturally to me they're ones that I've um, done for a long time uh, one of my initial marks that I used to do um, was hearts and in some of the schools I've done whole like coloring in pages with all different types of heart designs but that's not something that shows up as often in my work now the shapes are a little bit more abstract probably than um, identifiable as a particular shape notwithstanding circles and dots you can pick those this is a little bit more a semic writing and what you can see me using are these tiny little bottles from the discount store that have a fine uh, point to them or a fine nib and I fill these bottles up with various um, with various paints so some of them have actually got um, De La Rowney inks in them they're very very fluid and when you apply it it will spread others have Joe Sonia paints or golden paints things that I have around and they're usually unless it's a fluid acrylic they're usually a little bit thick for these bottles so you can add water distilled water but I tend to put a little bit of flow medium in it and one of the best ways of getting a flow medium is for um, looking in the area of your 
discount store or art store for where they've got the fluid painting because the paints there um, are to be able to be poured and they also have you know a pouring medium or a fluid medium um, with the paints in that area to make it easier if you're into doing the fluid pours so I actually have a bigger collection now from when um, from when I made this piece of uh, artwork and what I did is just every time I'd go near the discount store I would just pick up another two bottles so it's taken me a while uh, to build up my collection but I have a lot of different paints now in these and I also have black white and gold and the tallest bottle that you can see there um, it's like a bronzy color and it's actually decanted out of a wattle house paint so is my gold the wattle um, house paint for interior walls is beautiful just add a little bit more of the flow medium and it works really well so I've got some of the larger elements down and now you can see me just putting some little dots and if you think about it, making uh, little dots, you can make them into circles, you can make them in straight lines. If you apply them with the end of a paintbrush or a stick, the first one is going to be the biggest and subsequent ones will get smaller. So you can do really nice increasing and decreasing patterns by using the end of a brush. If you use an applicator like I'm using most of the circles or the little dots will be exactly the same size you really have to leave it for a, an extra length of time and squeeze hard to get a larger dot to come out whereas um, yeah if you're using the end of a stick skewer paintbrush the biggest dot will always be the first one that you lay down um, I'm signing my name early here <laughs> usually that's one of the last things that I do I'm in my 35th year of teaching and I have always liked to sign off or give children little smiley faces so I still do that when I sign my work you'll know it's one of mine because it'll have the little smiley face the little flowers that I'm making at the moment uh, my mum actually taught me how to do these and we were sitting in a gutter outside of a fish and chip shop at Cotton Tree, Queensland. And it was Good Friday and we had a two and a half hour wait for our fish and chips. And mum happened to have a pen and an, her iPad with her. And so we drew all over her iPad cover with the black pen. And uh, one of the things we drew was her showing me how to do this simple rose. And we just kept practicing until her whole iPad cover was um, completely covered in these roses and little leaves. So it's a fun motif, brings back a lot of memories. You don't normally sit in the gutter with your mum. There were just people everywhere. 
it was uh, quite phenomenal very relaxed we were right near a um, caravan park so there were children and there were bikes everywhere and everyone was happy yeah it was a lot of fun so I tend to think of it as being the cotton tree rose <laughs> you can see me here just trialing the bottle to make sure that the paint inside is going to come out I have a very bad habit of testing it on the back of my hand I know I should really do it on the silicon mat that you can see my work sitting on that's the pink one or even on a palette or scrap of paper sometimes it's hard to stop bad habits and the reason I test is because occasionally some of them are very fluid in which case I could end up with the paint just running out and other times they have blocked even though I keep a pin or the little cap on top in which case I have a very very fine length of wire it's beading wire and it will fit into the um, opening of these narrow little bottles so you can see these little clusters of three flowers um, or three dots forming flowers I love doing those you can see blue ones to the left of where I'm working now this little motif that I'm doing it reminds me of a bunch of grapes and when I was courting my husband or my husband was courting me the family farm had quite a large vineyard on it and yeah we would spend a lot of time walking amongst the grapes it was beautiful it had lots of different varieties so this just reminds me of that time in our life it was romantic for me anyway it wasn't my business so I wasn't stressing about the hailstorms that could come through or the lorikeets that were eating the grapes all the stresses that my husband's family had I just got to enjoy afternoon walks and picking grapes warm off the vine from having been in the sun all day very very nice so it looks like I'm doing another one of those my little grape ones and it appears that I'm squeezing quite hard on this container so the paint coming out is actually thicker than some of the others that I've been using up until now and just then you saw me fix uh, an error where the paint actually I didn't lift it the container off the painting properly and it formed a line so then I just went with that and made a series of lines and now I'm repeating that elsewhere so it doesn't look so um, strange being a one-off mark somewhere on the artwork and that's something that I keep in mind like even though this is very relaxed and you know I'm never quite sure what's going to happen I do try and make sure that I have a color repeated in multiple places on my canvas or on my substrate whatever I'm I'm working on and it's the same when I start to make the marks over the top is that I'll repeat the same mark sometimes in the same color but oftentimes it will be the same mark and in different colors so it just tends to make um, the picture more cohesive there's nothing that's really standing out that is a one-off 
I'm not trying in this instance to have a focal point. It's not a beautiful landscape with a stunning sunset. It's not a portrait or a still life where I want to have a focused image. I just want everything very random, very relaxed and a little bit of everything everywhere. Maybe it reflects uh, my headspace. <laughs> so here I am with a little bit of the Joe Son uh, jo Sonia Magenta and it's on a round paintbrush and I'm just letting the round tip of the brush make the shapes for me. I'm letting the brush do its work so when I press down I get a little bit of that like almost like a, a body of a fish shape and now I've got it right up on its tippy toe and I'm making the little swirls and you can see or I can see that I haven't dried off the base coat till now because as I'm doing the little spirals it's changing color according to what the base was underneath so I'm going to have to be careful that I don't make lots of muddy colors through that. So there again, the yellow acemic writing isn't dry. So my damp brush picked that up and then it's turned it a green up in the top corner. Oh, now I've gone into purple. I'll get a neutral color there. We've got yellows and pinks and blues all in together. <laughs> Looking back I go, oh what did you do that for? <laughs> Still, I might, um, yeah I did it at the time. It's what I was thinking of it's how I was processing things. I've been working a lot with spirals recently and up until probably the last 12 months I've always thought of a spiral as being something quite negative where you may have a negative thought and it spirals it just goes round and round in your head and you can't get it off or you know you have um, behavioral things that you you know things that you do repeatedly that you wish you didn't do and I don't know just a cycle for me was more negative in my way of thinking whereas now I'm starting to see a a spiral or these circles going round as being not inward but outward so I start the spirals usually on the inside and I work outwards and it's like a pebble being thrown into a pond and the ripple effect just keeps expanding so it's just a different way of thinking of the same motif but I'm finding that it's very liberating to think about it from such a positive point of view rather than internalizing it so you know life threw some real curveballs and a lot of challenges and so it was that inward um, way of thinking and it's not that life doesn't have its challenges at the moment but I feel as though in my personal faith journey and life in general I'm able to um, look out and look up and embrace the spiral. That was probably going a little bit deep when you're only wanting to look at how I paint so whether or not I leave this in the edit or not, I'm not sure. But again, it's just what came to mind when I'm trying to share with you the process of 
the painting. Look, I'm being a good girl. I tested that colour on the side. So this for me, working with a dark blue or a purple, that's typically my black. I'm not adverse to using black. I will use it. But in a situation like this, I'm less inclined to have black. I will just use other darker colours to put the shading into the work. And maybe, you know, to give your eyes just a little bit of a place to rest so that it's all not bright and busy. Here's the grape motif coming again. Now this little board is at the top of one of my art trolleys and it stops the paints that I have stacked on the top of the trolley from falling backwards. So when my three art puppies all come into my art room, which is often, if I'm here, they're usually here, this particular trolley I just pull across in front of the doorway and it means that they, the airflow is there but they can't actually wander out into areas they're not supposed to go unsupervised. And because I move that trolley around so often, I was finding that some of the containers of paints that I had on the top would fall off. So this board having come from a broken picture frame uh, has made an excellent backstop. So that's where it sits in my art room. I haven't got it. I, I could put it back in its frame and put it on the wall, but it's doing its job nicely in my trolley. Because I tend to find if anything falls on the floor, one of the dogs will find it and chew it up for sure. So I have to be very careful that I don't have um, anything that I don't want them to touch with their teeth. They were in here when I first started doing the voiceover. So our old boy is Benji. He's now 14. And then we have two 12-month-old brothers and they are Teddy and Bear and they've got multiple beds in here and they swap and change all over the place moving from one to the other. I always have treats in here for them. Mostly they just curl up and have a big sleep but occasionally you will hear them making noise particularly Teddy, he's the most playful one he finds it hard to drop off to sleep and he just plays and plays and plays but once he's gone to sleep he's out to it now this is a slightly bigger bottle it has a much finer tip and I bought it through Jane Davenport and it's beautiful love it it's very very fine and what I have in it is a Wattles house paint. So I have one that's got a bronze and one that has gold in it. And I've had to add a little bit of fluid medium, but not a lot because the paint is actually quite, um, quite runny all of its own. So I have those. Here we go, this is an uh, De La Rowney ink. And this one here is like the artist quality. So it's not quite as pigmented as some of the more expensive or pearlescent ones of the range, but it's still a really lovely pink. And of course I love pink. 
can you tell? <laughs> so it's very hard for me to do something and not add pink to it. With these inks, you usually do have to give them a good shake because some of the pigment that's in it settles to the bottom of the little bottles. It would probably be helpful if they had little ball bearings or something like that in them to help mix up the pigment to distribute it evenly. So maybe that's something I can I can do. I'm sure that I can buy little ball bearings to do what I need ball bearings to do in my artwork and in my containers but I just love recycling and upcycling so when I go through a chalk marker and I've run out of ink or paint in them I always cut them open and pinch the ball bearings and then reuse those ball bearings in my own little bottles so maybe I'll have enough one day to add to these FW inks that I have as well. When it comes to these inks, the two brands that I have, well, the brand I have the most of is the De La Rowney FW inks. And I do have some Amsterdam inks and they're lovely also. They're not cheap, so I started everything I own I started with my favorite colors so I would have a pink and I would have a teal and an orangey kind of color was where I started and if I could only get two of something it would be a pink and a teal so initially in my art room you know that's what I had in paint pens and that's what I had in Tombow markers and that's what I had in pastels and every different kind of um, art supply. I would have pink and teal and then gradually as I was able to afford more then I added in a yellow, I added in the oranges and then just gradually built up the colours white and black was another essential and i've tried all different kinds of whites and blacks in all those different supplies to see which ones i like and which ones i don't i don't think i use them on this piece but i've recently received for my birthday the jane davenport paint markers and they have a brush tip to them and they are beautiful to work with and I've been doing a lot of miniature little landscapes and using those pens and they're not cheap hence they were a birthday gift for me however I will be saving and buying more when they run out because they're beautiful really nice product I don't think I had them when I was working on this piece because otherwise I'm sure you would see me using them So doing a voiceover is new for me. This is the first time I've tried it. I just had a sip of drink then because I was um, getting thirsty. A dry mouth from the talking. Um, let me know if you can whether I'm talking too much or not enough on point or... If there's something that you'd like to know a little bit more about something that I'm not explaining well enough I've already realized that I should have had in front of me a list of exactly what paint colors I used for this piece 
because I'm telling you from from memory Uh, this one, I think, is an Amsterdam teal. So there you go. So here you can see me still using the one colour, teal. However, I've used it in a golden fluid acrylic. I've used it um, in my own mix making it a little bit more lime with yellow making it paler with white to almost a pale blue and now I'm using a fluid ink from Amsterdam and each time you do it the color is going to be slightly different even though the name is the same and in fact when my bottles of paint get really really low I combine them all into a bottle and I, I mark it off with masking tape so that I know it's my own colour. However, I try and mix a colour so I have a bottle that looks like teal, works like a teal, but is actually my own custom colour where I've mixed my own blues and whites and whatever else I've had um, into one bottle. It's just to save on space. So here we go. This is not black. This is a really, really deep uh, blue, slightly to the purpley side. And I'm just looking around now as to where I can obviously put this color like where do I want to see dark is going to stand out I mean it recedes but it's going to be very noticeable so where do I want to push back and have some depth in my work lighter colors are going to pop out towards you and the deeper colors are going to sit back and as you can see I haven't dried any of these layers yet so when I actually put this applicator onto the artwork it's scratching through other colors you can see it there well it's going through the wet teal if you don't like that effect then dry <laughs> between your layers I happen to like it I don't mind I, I call them the happy accidents when you are working with something and suddenly the paint um, blends with another color that and you weren't necessarily planning on it unfortunately I didn't film all the way through to the completion of this piece of artwork so if you compare what you're seeing on the screen now with the finished photo which will come up shortly it's also in the thumbnail of the YouTube you'll be able to pick some of the differences there's a lot more depth that's been put in with darker colors however I've also lifted some areas with a lot more white anyway you can compare the two if I was to take this further or if it was a gift for someone else I would also be adding to it some stamping and maybe even a little bit of stenciling. Let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this process and how I can improve my voiceover. Thank you very much for making it all the way through to the end. Bye!